Hi, it's Pastor Craig with our final midweek video. Boy, they sure have been a lot of fun. We appreciate everyone who's helped us out uh, with the interviews along the way. This week we're continuing, finishing actually, looking at our five point promise that we make in baptism. This part, the fifth and final part of the promise is we say we will strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I think when you first hear about that promise to strive for justice and peace in all the earth, it can kind of seem overwhelming. Geez, I'm, I'm one person, I'm not an army, Pastor Craig. You know, I can't move a mountain. Uh, and that's true. But when we strive for peace and justice, that means we try to do our part. And oftentimes, I think it's more effective if it's just one person you're helping or just one family or just one cause that you're involved in. You know, it's the old adage, if we'd all sweep in front of our doorstep, the entire city would be clean. That's the same way as if every Christian would take this responsibility seriously to maybe help one person or one cause, and we all did that collectively. Wow, what a difference we would make in the world. That would be a kingdom impactful difference to bring justice and bring peace. Um, sometimes we think about doing social justice as, as you know, giving people money or handing people out things. But uh, while that's certainly a, a part of it, that's not all of it. Doing social justice can be willing to listen to one person's cause. Uh, be willing to sit with them, to struggle with them. Uh, it can mean taking up for someone. I often think of the, the brave men and women who put on a uniform of, of all kinds, um, both here and all over the country and all over the world, and they stand up and protect people. Uh, they're willing to fight for someone uh, who's getting picked on or discriminated against. Equally, I think about uh, the brave men and women who stand up and advocate uh, for the voiceless in our government whether that be on the local, state, or, or federal level. Um, you know, there's many, many ways that we can strive to do justice and bring peace to all the world. And we're gonna let you have the final word. Here's what you had to say about it. So the topic this week is to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. How do you do that in your everyday life? Helping with others, like helping them being faithful into coming to church and helping them believe and just helping just with everybody. Um, well, one way is that I helped a lady called Miss Nadine and we helped her through all her papers and everything and helped her organize and it gave her a peace in mind to like know that she was um, safe and had all her papers that needed to be. I mean, I would say treating the people around me like they are all God's children because I mean we are all children of God and so no matter who it is you know whether it's my teachers or if it's the kid that is a little different or breaks the rules all the time so I've got to all the time I still have to treat them with the same respect that they deserve because God loves us all the same and so it's not like any one of us is less than the other so going into any circumstance with anybody with the same mentality of you deserve love and respect, no matter what you've done. I have part of a bag from... I'm Jenny Schultz, and I'm at Kids First Law Center, and we give children a voice in custody and divorce conflicts. So in the past two years, there have been four fatal shootings in Cedar Rapids involving teenagers. And so I was part of a team that interviewed kids from the neighborhoods, middle school, high school kids. And we asked them, what can adults do to help kids? And one of the things they talked about are these neighborhood beautification efforts, like picking trash, painting houses, the little lending libraries in people's yards. And so when the church had its uh, God's Work Our Hands Day, I signed up to pick up trash. Morning. So we cleaned it up, you know, set Sunday afternoon, spent hours doing it. I drive to work the next morning at, uh, down 4th Avenue, and there's already litter where I'd picked up litter. <laughs> and I thought, I thought, all right, people, game on. Like, I, I'm going to keep picking up litter until there's no more litter. And uh, I'm, I'm going to change the norm in this neighborhood. They did a study where they have a U.S. mailbox on a corner. 
and they stick an envelope partway in the mailbox and there's like a clear window in it and you can see that there's cash inside. So it's like somebody intended to mail it but didn't quite get it in the mailbox. They spread trash around, same mailbox, they clean up all the trash. When there's trash around, 30% of the people took the envelope. When there's not trash around, only 13% of people took the envelope. You know, it's the broken windows theory, but there's actually research now on this that says, you know, when, when neighborhoods are cleaned up, then people are more likely to, you know, follow societal norms, you know, make better choices. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's part of my, I mean, that's part of peacemaking to me is, um, you know, there are a lot of things that you can't change, right? You look at a problem like gun violence among kids and you say like, okay, that's a huge problem. I can't, like, what am I gonna do to fix it? I'm one person. And, you know, but when I walk down the street and I pick up a block and I look back at it after it's all cleaned up, I feel like, um, yeah, that was one person. And it mattered to the people who live on that block. It mattered to the people who saw me do it. Mm -hmm. I think it matters to the kids. Well, I went to Bible camp as a kid, and in fifth grade, I made a promise to read the Bible every day. And I read the Bible every single day from fifth grade through college. And then I, you know, fell off the, <laughs> fell off the map and I fell off the wagon and I, I you know, then, then you have periods when you're really good at it and other periods where you're not. But, um, but those were a lot of years that I spent um, reading every day. And I would spend a lot of time in the Gospels with what Jesus said about the poor and um, the least of these. And, and it's, that's a calling to me. That's, those are, those are inspiring words. That's like, that's like, you know, it, it gives you the map. Like, hey, here, I painted the picture. I, I showed you the path. This is, this is what you do. <laughs> oh, that's oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> We'd be taking your comedy act on the road. I see, I see God moving all the time in this job, and it's so cool. You know, for, for us, it's about making sure that kids' voices are heard and that, you know, these, there are these really difficult custody and divorce cases and the outcome is gonna affect the kid more than anybody else. And so shouldn't somebody be listening to them and ask them how they feel about it and what's important to them? You know, we see this all the time that these kids are the peacemakers in their family. And sometimes, a lot of times, they're better peacemakers than adults. And so, you know, our job here is to try to help the parents, you know, create peace in their family, to reduce the conflict, to improve their communication with each other, and to, and to have there be peace in their family. And then, you know, long term, what we see years later is that kids can have peace in their own relationships when they go off and get married and um, start their own families. I'm going to show kids that people care about them. So that's when I began my garbage collection efforts and I became the trash lady. And you take yeah. more help. I, I want more help, yeah. When, in fact, the day that you asked me uh, if I would talk on the video, the day that you called me, um, I had just been driving to work down 4th Avenue and I said, you know what, God, I'm, I'm not keeping ahead of it. Uh, this is a losing battle, and this is bigger than one person, and I can't, I don't think I can keep doing it, and uh, so you got to find me some help. Like, I need some help. <laughs> so, that, yeah. so, and you then you call. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so, if someone wants the help, what yeah. do you do? Uh, do you want to flash my flash my phone number on the screen? They could okay, send me please. a text. They can hit me up after they're... After church, they can yeah. um, they can hunt me down. They can find me at Kids First. All right. Um, yeah, please, please come one, come on.